Okay, so let's start setting up our environment for our hands-on exercises. Now this is gonna involve using Docker to create what are called containers. Containers, think of them as like um, small like virtual computers that we can have running on our computer. Now to do so, what we're gonna do is we're gonna head over to docker.com to download Docker if you don't already have it installed. You'll click on here and get started and that'll take you to the page to download the version of Docker for your operating system. Then you're gonna open up Docker Desktop and that's gonna take you to a screen that looks like this, okay? So there's two things, there's containers, those are the virtual computers, which I have none running right now, but you need like a recipe, you need like a blueprint or a template for those virtual computers to run them. And those are called images. And right now I have three images, you're gonna to need to download these images. The way you do that is you'll just click here on the search bar and then search for like, let's say Minio. Minio is gonna be our storage layer. And then you'll click pull to download that image. And then, so that's gonna be like our object storage in which where we store data. Then there's gonna be Dremio, where we're going to use as our query engine. You're gonna want this image right here, the Dremio OSS one, and you'll click pull to download that image. And then you're gonna want the Nessie image. Okay, and that's right there. And you just click pull to pull the Nessie image. So once you have all three images, you should see them right here under images. And now what you need to do is create a container for each one. So first we'll do Minio. Minio is going to be the one with like sort of the most stuff going on. So I click here in optional settings and we'll call, we'll give the container name. So we'll call it Minio. We're going to give it a host port. We have to just basically state these host ports. So whatever number you see here, that's the number you put there essentially. So 9,000 and 9,001. Okay. And that's just going to bind the little communication ports on the container to match the same ones on our laptop so that way we can access the container from our laptop. And then over here, we're gonna have some environmental variables. These are gonna be variables that we can define in the container that'll affect its behavior. Specifically, we wanna do minio root uh, username, I'm pretty sure it is. I always have to double check this. Um, so how do you double check this? You head over to hub.docker.com. And here you can look up any images that you're using. So in this case, I'm looking up the minio image. There it is and click on that. It's gonna take me to the page with all the documentation. I would read through this. All I really care right there, it's Minio root user. So I'm glad I checked. Okay, so Minio root user is the variable because it has to be right for it to have the effect that the desired effect. So in this case, my username, you can set it up to whatever you want, which will be admin. So I'm gonna have a username of admin and then Minio root password. And that's gonna be password. And then I'm gonna set up one more thing just for mapping to AWS, Minio region. And I'm just gonna set that to US East one. Okay, it could be any of the AWS regions. It doesn't, I don't particularly matter for this particular exercise. So you can click run and that'll run that container. So now that virtual computer is gonna be up and again, I'll see any containers that I have running here under the container panel, okay? And then I can see, hey, how much memory and how much CPU I'm using that I have available to Docker. And again, if for some reason you end up using all of it, you can always extend that by going over to your settings and you can give more. So I have a 64 gig RAM machine here. I've allocated, I think like eight gigs of, of memory to uh, Docker. So I have some flexibility there. Um, you do what you think is right. We'll take a look at how much we end up using once we get all containers going. Okay, so we go to images. Now I wanna do the Dremio image. So I'll click on that. Again, we just kind of give it a name. And then again, we just map all the ports. So again, whatever numbers on the right, we put on the left. 31010, 32010, 45678, 9047, okay. And then here, no environmental variables, no volumes, nothing. That's that's good to go. We hit run, let that do its thing. Okay, and then we'll go back to my images one more time to start a Nessie image. I'm gonna hit run. Once again, this is gonna be called Nessie 19120 8080 8443. Okay, and again, no environmental variables needed for this one. We're just gonna use a plain, vanilla run of Nessie. 
Okay, so now we have these three sort of virtual computers running. One's running Minio, our storage software. One's running Dremio, our query engine. And one is running Nessie, our iceberg catalog. Okay, now the first thing I want to do is make sure that I have somewhere to store the data. So I need to go to Minio. And that's going to be, you go to localhost. Localhost always represents your computer. And again, we've mapped all this software to those ports. So I'm going to access my computer on port 9000, really 9001. And that's where I'm going to find Minio. And here I can put the admin, the username and password. Okay. And then you hit login. Okay. And now I'm logged in to Minio. And basically the units of storage in object storage are called buckets. So think of buckets as like having different uh, hard drives or different folders in which you can store data. And each bucket can, you can give different permissions to different users and set different access rules. We're not going to play around with all that. We're just going to create a bucket and we're going to name that bucket warehouse. It's going to be where we warehouse our data. Okay. So I'll create that bucket and there it is. Wonderful. So as we create iceberg tables and write iceberg data, we'll see that data show up here in this bucket. And again, so that's going to be our storage layer. That's our data lake. Nest is going to be our catalog that tracks which files, which metadata file for which table is the right one. So now all we need to do is actually just set everything up in Dremio. Dremio will be localhost 9047. That's where you'll find Dremio. Okay, and then basically what we do is we just register for Dremio. So uh, Alex said, said uh, Dremio.com and And we are in. Okay, so here we are on the Dremio UI, and here we can basically start connecting different data sources to Dremio, such as, um, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect, let's say here, um, our sample source. Okay, this is just gonna be some sample data that Dremio makes available for you to play with, um, which we'll use in some of our examples. But then we want to connect our Nessie catalog. That's going to be our iceberg catalog. Again, it's not the only iceberg catalog that Dremio works with. You could use things like AWS Glue Data Catalog as your iceberg catalog, Hive. Uh, again, you could use that Hadoop catalog, that file storage catalog with any of the different data lakes, storage solutions. Um, so all of those would work. So here we are. I'm going to just name this source Nessie. Real quick. And then again, here what we have to do is that I need to make sure that I have the right IP address here. Okay, so I need to find out because what happens is that the way Docker works is that all these containers are put onto a network that Docker is managing. And through the Docker soft Docker desktop software, we can actually find, hey, what is the IP address of each of these uh, containers on that imaginary network? So in this case, what I care about is the Nessie, the location of Nessie. So I'll go to Nessie, bring up the Nessie screen, and then you'll see here there's a button called expect. That's going to allow us to kind of see all the details of the container. Specifically, what I care about is networks. Okay, this is going to have all the network data for each network that it's on. Right now, I only have one network running, and that's Bridge. That's the default network in, in Docker. And I can see that its IP address is 172.17.04. So I'll copy that over, paste that in here. Okay, and we're good to go. And that's what the URL should look like. It should be like the IP address of the container accessing port 19120 slash API slash V2. Okay, and then we're gonna hit none here for authentication because we're just using plain Nessie so that no authentication has been configured. And that's gonna give all the credentials so that way Dremio can talk to Nessie. But again, Nessie is just the catalog and a catalog is only gonna provide the address to where the metadata is. It's not where the metadata is. That's still on some sort of storage layer. So over here, I have to put the credentials for where that data is stored, so that way Dremio can access it. So again, this is going to be inside the warehouse bucket in our Minio installation. And notice it says S3, but Minio is a S3 compatible storage system, so we can use an S3 connection to connect to Minio. We're going to use our access key, so it would just be our Minio username and password, so admin password. And then we're going to add these custom connection properties. 
there's three we need to add. The first one is s3 fs.s3a.path.style.access. This just basically turns on path style access, which just means that the way it's going to write the URLs that it makes the request for the data to, to Minio, it puts the name of the bucket at the end. So it's like slash warehouse at the end. Um, again, do you need to know that? No. All you need to know is you need to set it to true. That'll do what you need. Okay. Then there's the endpoint. So this tells it, hey, where is this mini, where is this Minio install? So it'll be that, but I need to make sure I find the right IP address. So I have to head over to Docker, look at the Minio container, inspect it, make sure that I got the right IP address, which is 172.17.02. I think that's actually what it says there. So 172.17.02. Yep. So that's good. And then the last one I have to add is this one, dremio.s3.compat. That turns on compatibility mode, meaning I'm using an S3 compatible storage layer. So we're going to set that to true. And we're good to go. Only the last thing I have to do is uncheck this encrypt connection box, because since we're doing this off our laptop, there is no um, SSL certificate. So no encryption going on here, because it's all off our laptop. So you can just uncheck that, hit save. And there we go. So now Dremio has access to your Nessie catalog, and we're going to be able to just basically treat that catalog um, as a place to write and read Iceberg tables. And you'll see that it feels pretty much like you're working with any database. And that's the beauty of Iceberg. But the extra beauty is that since this catalog is independent of Dremio, I can just take this catalog over to something like Apache Spark, Apache Flink, and work with these very exact same tables. So basically being able to have one copy of the data that works with multiple tools is sort of that ultimate iceberg promise. So we'll continue on now that we have our setup. I'll see you all in a bit.